All right, we're back here with the 454 budget build. I know you guys have been wanting to see it. Ralphie has been on me like crazy. When are we gonna get the big boy motor built? Well, it's finally time. It's been so long because I've had to save my money up and get my envelope built up to buy this stuff. It ain't free. I had to buy some stuff used, find some deals on stuff. So I'm gonna go through the table here and show you what we've got and what we're gonna install on the motor today. And hopefully we'll get the same buttoned up. So we got the cheapest Chinese rocker arms money can buy. Wife actually got me that for my birthday. And uh, we got single groove crank pulley, same thing with the water pump pulley down there. Fuel pump block off plate, cheapest one China makes. We got an $86 camshaft down there, hydraulic, uh, flat tap it from Summit Racing, cheapest hydraulic lifters you can buy. I did go big on the head gaskets because this is going to be a twin turbo build eventually. We went with Comatic head gaskets, went with the thinnest <laughs> ones I could get to keep some compression in this motor. We went good too on the ARP head studs because uh, I've had some experience with boosted motors with head gasket issues. Got some double valve springs for a uh, hydraulic flat tap it cam with new retainers and locks. Got a cheap bolt kit for it. This is the big thing I've been waiting on. Uh, I was thinking about going new on the heads, but I really couldn't afford it. So bought a set of used Pro Comp Speedmaster heads from uh, Facebook Marketplace and got them. We're gonna put the springs on them because they didn't come with them. These heads are rectangle port because, you know, we had this motor came factory with peanut port heads and I could have went oval port, you know, you could have went cast iron, yes, but I really wanted aluminum rectangle port heads to save weight. Same thing with the water pump. I got a deal on an aluminum water pump and a swap meet. Uh, also got a smoking deal on a single plane Dominator flange intake and a swap meet. Got a new Milodon oil pump. Got some valve covers from Holly. Also got a distributor from Holly. And we got us a Cloy's uh, timing gear. We're gonna get this stuff installed on our motor. So hopefully we got all the correct parts and they all bolt together. You know how it is. You get a bunch of random parts like this trying to make a hot rod and they don't always go together like you think they will. So we'll see what we run into on this thing. I'm gonna try to figure up exactly what I got in all this stuff and get a running total for you guys. If you watched the earlier videos, you can see this thing has hyper eutectic uh, pistons. They're just cheap old dome top pistons. Uh, and it's also got some Chinese H-beam rods in it. We just threw them in there, didn't balance anything. Reuse a stock block, reuse a stock crank, put new bearings in it. So go back and watch the old video if you haven't watched it already. It'll show you what we've done up to this point. We got Rocky in here for uh, quality control. He checks all our clearances and everything, cleans all the parts before we put them on the motor. That way we don't have any issues. Right, Rocky? So this motor's been hanging out on the stand for, I don't know, six months at least now. And we've had it in a trash bag with oil on the motor trying to keep it from rusting or getting dirty. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna run a 7 16 by 14 tap through all the head bolt holes to get any kind of dirt out of those. We don't want those studs to go down into a hole that has a bunch of trash in it. It's gonna mess up our torque specs. So that's the very first thing we're gonna do. You always need to do this when you're putting new studs or bolts in. Now I'm doing this with the engine upside down. That way any trash that we're getting out of those threads is gonna fall on the ground instead of going down in the bore. Am I doing it right? You can't eat a tap, okay? That's it. You approve? Okay. It hits you every time it comes around. It's not gonna change, okay? This back one here has really got something bad in the threads. I don't know. It's like I'm running into a big hunk of metal or something. Maybe I'm getting past it now. All right, let's spin the other side of the bottom and go through those threads. We don't eat wires. This one's the same deal. It's really got a tight spot in it. I don't know. It's like George Clooney in that movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Whew, we're in a tight spot. When he's up in that barn. Didn't you watch it, guys? I did. All right, we got all the threads cleaned out on these head bolt holes on this big heavy thing. That one, I, I think it's going to be all right. The tight spot in the threads appears to be lower than what the studs are going to go down. 
We'll see when we go to put it together. I'll go ahead and give you the cam specs on our $86 Summit cam. This cam is so cheap, it didn't even come with a cam card or assembly lube or anything. And uh, this thing now is $78 on Summit Racing. They went down on the price since I bought it, which has just burned my biscuits. But I looked the specs up. Here's what they are. 228, 238 at 50 thousandths, 540 lift, and 114 lobe separation angle. So this is a bigger can than what I had in my 460 turbo project in my Maverick. If you watch those old videos, it had a 500 lift Summit Racing cam. So this is a little bit bigger than what the Maverick had in it. So this cam has quite a bit of junk on it. Probably wouldn't matter it's probably just some sort of whatever they wash it with but i'm gonna go ahead and clean that off and put some assembly lube on this camshaft if you watch the first video of us putting this engine together we actually put assembly lube on the cam bearings all the way back through there when the crank was out that way we have assembly lube all the way at the back of the motor uh since we can't really get to there now you really want to put the cam in first but at the time when i built this six months ago I did not have a cam yet. That's why I didn't do the cam first. So we got our hydraulic lifters here. You always want to soak your hydraulic lifters in oil. <laughs> Bless you, Ralphie, because the, uh, the oil will get all inside there because these things are full of oil on a hydraulic lifter. I always put them in a bucket full of oil. And we had some viewers send us some, some gloves I'm using today and also a model car kit. I know this came from Mac. But I can't remember the name of the guy who sent these, but we do appreciate them. We definitely need them, and uh, we'll use them. We're just going to spray it down with some brake cleaner to get that stuff off. I'll wipe it down with a, a rag, and uh, that way we know it's clean. We got our engine assembly lube here. Uh, it's the same stuff we used on the rest of the motor, but it's, uh, it says with Molly Graphite, so maybe it's good. I don't know. I got it from O'Reilly's and uh, I'm gonna put assembly lube on these and start sticking this camshaft in the motor just like toothpaste. So on a flat tappet camshaft on these older motors from you know whatever the mid 80s and back had flat tappet cams um, they are pretty susceptible to having issues on startup on killing a lobe so the most important things I would recommend is lubricating the camshaft, which most camshafts that cost, you know, more than the price of a tank of gas come with assembly lube. And you would just put assembly lube on, on the lobes and on the bearings here, the bearing surfaces here. Also, pre-lubing the motor with like a, a screwdriver on a drill, pull the distributor out and pre-lube the motor. That's very important. And also, you're supposed to run them around like 2,000 RPM and fluctuate the RPM for usually what, like 20 minutes when you first crank them up. So all those things are important. Also, uh, flat tappet cams are really supposed to have zinc in the oil. So you might want to put a zinc additive in your oil or buy oil that has zinc already in it um, to make sure you don't hurt your cam lobe. So you don't want to to nick a cam bearing, so just be really gentle. You need some sort of a handle. I'm just using the the uh, gear for my timing chain. I bought a double roller timing chain for this thing since we're gonna have more spring pressure uh, and a bigger cam in it. Uh, also, when, if you are installing new cam bearings, uh, it's always good to use the actual cam you're going to run because I've ran into that where they put new cam bearings in at the machine shop and they didn't use the cam that I had and now the cam don't fit in the motor, so you always want to test fit the actual cam you're going to run. Okay. There we go. It's in there and it spins. That's good. We got our three jaw puller on here. We're going to pull the old lower cam sprocket off because it's just a single, single chain and we're going to a double chain. Got all the nasty oil cleaned off there. Hopefully this thing is correct and fits and all that stuff. I really need a driver that fits around the outside of this to put even pressure on it, but I don't have that right now. I think we got it bottomed out on there now. It feels more solid. I'm, I'm hitting it really lightly and just working my way around. What are you doing, Pepper? 
Rebels. We're out here in the storage building looking for the uh, cam plate for that camshaft to install it because I moved everything out here into into totes because I have too many projects going at the same time. Hey, there's Rocky. Look at Rocky. Oh, look. This is Pebbles' mama over here. The white mama over here. And there's Granny Goat. Hey, Granny. Granny's the nicest one out here. She can't hear a thing. She's totally deaf. Hey, Pebbles. Oh, I went right on. Good thing I had my safety flip-flops on. That would have hurt my toe if, it, if I had something else on. Come on. Hey, buddy. Rocky. Man, you stubborn little thing. <laughs> There you go. Alright, now we just gotta find it down in here. You have to clean that guy up too. I kinda like these factory valve covers, really. I just wasn't sure if I'd have enough clearance for roller rockers with them. Okay, well, we've dug through all this. The cam plate's not in here. So this is what happens when you leave something sitting for six months, so. I gotta dig somewhere else in the shop and find the cam play. I just have absolutely no idea where it's at right now. I'm gonna let this thing soak while we're doing other stuff because uh, that thing is really grimed up like a typical, you know, old motor that's been sitting forever. All right, well, after looking all over the place for a cam plate for like an hour, I figured out that even though it has bolt holes for it, it does not actually have a cam plate. So yeah, rookie move there, once again, Six months of waiting, I forgot about. So I'm not one of them fancy people that like degrees the cam in. Uh, me and my dad have done it before, years ago when I was a kid, but uh, honestly, every car I've built since then, I just line the dots up and I'm done. So we put some Loctite on the cam bolts. You can also use, a, you know, there's like a cam lock plate or whatever you call it that goes behind the bolts. You bend the tabs over the bolts. There's a couple different ways to do it. Or, you know, I've done it without any Loctite and I've never had any trouble with that either. So just kinda however you wanna do it. Just like I told you guys in the uh, last video, every time you put a new thing in the motor, you wanna turn that thing 360 degrees and make sure nothing is, uh, you know, binding up on you. You can look down in there and see the cam spin down in the motor. I'm gonna start assembling the valve springs on this cylinder heads here. And these intake valves are 2.25 inch and the exhaust is 1.88. Uh, these also have a 119 cc combustion chamber and uh, they have a 320 cc intake runner. It looks like somebody has probably done some, a little bit of work to them porting at some point because these were used if I haven't told you, I paid 800 bucks for these things used uh, from a local person. These heads had three shims on them. So I'm trying to figure out the correct installed height to get the pressure we need. On the high end, on a hydraulic flat tappet big block Chevy, uh, you need to be at like 330 pounds of open pressure and 130 pounds on closed pressure, but that's on the high end. So we're gonna try to get close to that uh, I don't want to wear the cam out too soon either, but uh, that's what we're kind of shooting for. We got the exhaust to the correct installed height, which is 1.875 inches. The way I was able to achieve that was I had to take all three of the shims someone else had put on here off. For some reason, the installed height is totally different from the intake to the exhaust. So this had a two inch installed height is how it was set up. This had a 1.82. So I took all the shims out of here to get it to 1.875 and I added them to this one and we're at about 1.90 so I may have to get some more shims like 20 was that 25,000 shims or whatever to get this at the correct height. When you get something used like this you always want to inspect everything and these have just came from the machine shop is what I was told. It appears that they've had a valve job and already been lapped in. That's also what I was told. So I'm just gonna put a little grease on the guides. I always like to do that to make sure everything's lubricated good. And uh, we're gonna put the springs on this thing. You really need to do a lot of research when you're picking valve springs because you, these are 348 pounds per inch. That means you can do the math and divide it out by, you know, for every hundred thousandths, how many pounds of pressure that is. So you could install these a little too tall or a little too short and the taller it is, the less pressure you're gonna have. 
the tighter it is, the more pressure you're gonna have. So do the math, figure out your spring pressures, figure out what the recommended pressures are because whether you've got a small block or a big block, whether you've got a roller or a flat tappet or mechanical or hydraulic, it's all those have different pressures. Oh, man, it would be nice to have one of those air powered or hydraulic, whatever they are, uh, valve spring compressors. We have literally been working on this one head right here, doing measuring and checking everything for like, what, a couple hours now, Ralphie, yeah, right? Like Two. It's been a couple hours and we're on the last valve spring now on this first cylinder head uh, So I checked the height on every single one as we went to make sure we're good. So we got we had to take the All the shims off of all the intake ones and put them on all the exhaust So we doubled up the shims on the exhaust because the installed height is totally different on on every single uh, exhaust versus intake oh, man. This thing is really not made to be used with high pressure springs like this. So what I always do is once I get the springs installed, I like to take a hammer and tap, tap them to seat the uh, retainers in there. Oh my gosh, my knees cannot handle being bent like that for so long in my lower back. I beat my body up working too many hours, guys. On every other motor I've ever built, including the big block I put in the Maverick, I always use a single valve spring, uh, basically because simplicity's sake and I was cheap and all that stuff. So this is a double valve spring with a, a damper in there. And one of the big advantages to having a double valve spring is, aside from the extra pressure, um, you can, if you break this valve spring, you still have a spring on the inside that'll catch your valve and keep from ruining your engine. Uh, if you haven't thought about that, that is an advantage. We're on our second head now, and uh, it always helps to use some grease, some sticky grease to hold these locks in place. Here we go, final one. What's it been, Ralphie, four hours between the two heads? Yeah, probably four hours worth of work. I gotta clean a little bit of dirt off these heads too before we install. Got some brake cleaner here. I ran over the surface of this head with some 320 sandpaper on a block just to make sure that uh, I didn't have any burrs or anything from where these things have been transported. Now I'm taking some brake cleaner and cleaning the oil off the top of the block because this thing had been sitting with oil on it. We're gonna put our head gaskets on here. Obviously, Comedic would probably recommend us, you know, resurfacing this block and head to a certain RA value or whatever. But, you know, we're not gonna do that. We're just putting it on there with the stock finish on the block. Same thing with the head, and we're gonna see if it works. So I went with a 30 thousandths thick Comedic head gasket because I'm wanting to build all the compression I can. So this is a 30 cc dome top hyper eutectic piston, 4.25 bore, four inch stroke, 30 thousandths head gasket, pistons 40 thousandths in the hole, and it has a 119 cc combustion chamber. So I'll put all that together in your little magic calculator and it should be about 9.8 to one compression. This is also gonna be a turbo motor, uh, but the reason I'm running more compression is I'm planning on running this on ethanol. So I really like the advantages of having compression and boost works well together if you have enough octane. So because this is not a big block Ford, it actually threads into the water jacket. And so we're gonna put this thread sealer stuff on there and uh, use it and hand tighten these studs down in the block so we don't have any leaks. I'm just gonna put four studs in it for now and set the head over the, on over it and then thread each individual stud with the head already installed on there. I think it'll be kind of hard to set the head over all the studs at once. Oh, the big moment. You don't know how long I've been waiting for this right here. Now you'll notice that the threads on top are fine and the threads on the bottom are coarse. 
they go in the block. So there's a lot of advantages to doing a stud. That's one of the advantages. Um, you know, also your, your, your clamping force is better with a stud than a bolt. This thing has three different length head bolts. So you kind of got to watch what you're doing or you'll put them in the wrong spot. Uh, it's pretty easy to get mixed up. We're putting our ARP Molly Lube on all our threads. I coated the washers in them before I dropped them down on the heads. And uh, you have to do that to get the correct torque reading according to ARP. So make sure you do that one. So you're supposed to tighten these in, in three equal increments. And the final torque spec is 80 pounds. So that's what we'll do, I guess. You know. Looks like I'm going to have to take these uh, guide plates off because it sticks out too far and is in the way of the socket. So. Pull these out, grind down the guide plate a little bit and put some Loctite back on and put them back in. Usually with a torquing out a cylinder head, I, usually the sequence is starting in the middle and then working your way out as you go. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna start with 40 pounds and then we're gonna do 60 and then 80. I meant to say when I put the head gasket on there, but I checked and Cometic recommends not spraying copper spray on the head gaskets because they come with a coating on them. So that's why I did not copper spray the head gaskets when I put them on there. Just put them on there dry like they recommended. Oh man, we're on the last step now. 80 pounds. This uh, torque wrench, I've used it for like 15 years. Hopefully it's accurate. Man, when I torqued the heads on that big block Ford, I think they were like 140 foot pounds. It was ridiculous. I couldn't hardly do it. Okay, that's it. We got this head installed. Now we just gotta do the same thing on the other side and we will have these beautiful aluminum heads all bolted down. Okay, got our last stud in there with our sealant on there, our thread sealer. Just gotta put some molly lube on our washers and studs and get these things bolted down. You're also supposed to torque the heads down before the, the thread sealer that you put on the end of them uh, dries. Same story here. We got two of the guide plates that are right in the way. So I gotta take them out of the way to get this head bolts there we go last one awesome heads on there it's been a long time coming for me this is like one of the dream motors i wanted to build i love big blocks put a red loctite on there that way we don't have a screw in stud back out so we got all those clearance we'll say and uh, got them bolted back down. So hopefully we can take our heads off without taking our guide plates off next time. I mean, next time I blow the heads off this thing with 30 pounds of boost and have to try to take these out in the car, which is probably impossible. I'm gonna go ahead and put the oil pump on this thing. I didn't have a new one when we put the crank and stuff in it, so I'm gonna do it now. This is a high volume and high pressure pump. So I spent the big bucks on it, you know, like 90 bucks or something engine assembly lube in there just to help those gears out on dry start even though we're not really going to dry start it we're going to pre-lube this motor gotta clean up our old oil pump drive shaft i'm going to reuse it and uh find our new little collar that goes on it in the gasket set ellie's in here helping us now i don't know what she's doing what are you doing ellie huh you being good today you're never good she's too hyper to be good if you don't know it, inside there, if you knock that pin out and put some like washers or shims in there, you can up your oil pressure by doing that. If you didn't know that already, hopefully this thing will give us enough extra oil pressure to make up for all my shortcomings on assembling this thing. I should probably have a pop in this thing to turn it, but of course I'm not took the time to do that. Ralphie's gonna get our lifters here. Yeah, that smooth part goes to the bottom. So, and it goes down in. The, the holes at the top? Yeah, the holes at the top, yes. 
You got it? Is it going down in there smooth? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Now you just gotta do it 15 more times. So these are hydraulic flat tappet lifters, which is kind of ancient technology nowadays. Everything's you what? Know, roller. What? Did you get it? What? It went like extra far. It's because, look, it's because this, the lobe on this lobe of the cam is up. That one's down, that's why. Yeah. What do you think about this motor, Ralphie? I mean. Oh, sorry, engine. Uh. Do you think it's gonna be well, fast? Yeah, that's the part that I like. I, don't, I just don't like it. Well, it's like, it you don't like putting them together too much? Too, uh, too much just, time? I just like the after part. <laughs> yeah. After. Should be the most powerful motor we built. I mean, the six liter in the Starlet was probably close, but not not as many cubic inches. Uh, this should make a little bit more than the Starlet made on motor. The real reason Ralphie got involved with this is he wanted to stick his hands in the oil. <laughs> We gotta get some gloves your size. Yeah, yeah. Instead of extra larges, we need a smaller size. No, nah, I'm good, thanks. Get off me. Do you even remember me owning the Maverick at all? Or you nope. you were too young at the time? I was like. Uh, you were probably baby. like, you were probably like four years old or something when I sold it, something like that. Four what? or five, something like that. Oh. Gloves stuck in there? My glove. Oh, okay, did it tear? No. Yeah. No. Let's see. Push it. Yeah, I think we're good. He's got an incredible amount of oil on the floor. <laughs> Walking back and forth in this motor, just slinging oil everywhere. We'll check her. I took the marker, uh, Sharpie marker, and marked on top of the valve stem. And we're going to tighten these rockers down to their setting at zero lash or whatever. And then we're going to see where the wear pattern is. Okay, unforeseen issue. The poly locks that came with this are the wrong thread pitch for these studs. So I'm gonna have to buy different poly locks. That's wonderful news. I've been dying to open the new parts. So, whoa, whoa. okay, maybe you should lay the box down. That'd be good. <laughs> so these are our valve covers we got from Holly. Let's see if they look as good as they do on the box. Mm. Man, look at that. So they're the black fabricated ones. They're all, I guess, TIG welded and everything. Look, Chevrolet right there. They didn't have any there that said Ford that fit this motor. That's weird. Scratch, don't scratch them up against each other. Oh, look, it comes with a new bolts. I didn't even have to buy bolts for it. Well, didn't they just go the extra mile? You love it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? You like it? And this is our <coughs> distributor. Man, look at that billet, son. Only the best, huh? Now the reason, you could go a lot, lot cheaper on the distributor if you were just wanting to run like a normal HEI distributor and run a carburetor, but we're running fuel injection. So this is a dual sink distributor. And from what I understand, that means it's basically the cam and the crank sensor for this motor. So you have to have that if you're gonna run some sort of fuel injection, you have to have a way for it to see a crank and cam signal. Uh, unless you're running batch fire, then you just need a crank signal. But yeah, this thing is awesome. I like how it's small. I don't like the size of those big, huge ATI distributors, but that's pretty cool, huh? You like it? What else comes in there? What is that? There's, there's all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, there. that's the hold downs for the uh, plug wires. There's, there's the wiring harness. It's that. got some assembly lube stuff. Uh, that thing's awesome. There's that. Oh. It probably would have saved me a lot of time and hassle of cleaning this just to buy a new timing cover that already had a new seal in it. I've seen people do that before, but you know, me being a child of the Great Depression, I just can't do that. I can't throw nothing away. out of the heater she bought today. So we're gonna try to light this thing, right, Ralphie? Yeah. Hold that. Got some heat out here. This is our only source of heat in this 60 foot building. Ooh. There we go. Got the front seal out of this timing cover. 
We'll get the new one knocked in there. So I don't have a, a seal install tool, so I'm gonna work my way around, try to keep it even. Don't let one side get a bunch slower than the other side. I'm putting a really thin coat of Forma Gasket on the timing cover and the block both. I'm a fan of Forma Gasket. I know some people hate it, some people love it. Just don't use it real thick, that's the problem. You don't wanna get a bunch of Forma Gasket in your motor and then it'll clog up your pickup tube or something. But uh, yeah, just put it on thin. I wanna put some assembly lube on this chain too. Cause it, you know, everything needs a little bit of oil to get started. Uh, man, after you built a couple LS motors or any kind of modern engine, man, this seems ancient right here. They're using all these old paper gaskets and where they meet up in corners and don't seal up good. I'm gonna paint this motor after we get it totally assembled together. So that's why I didn't paint the timing cover yet. You don't want to, especially on a piece of like sheet steel like this, you don't want to just crank on it and try to get every bit of force you can. Usually you just want to snug these things up. You'll get the feel for it. So this water pump right here, I got at a swap meet for $30. I could not believe it. The only bad part about it is chrome. So we're gonna probably paint it black if I'm guessing, if I know me. So people who watched all the way back on the teardown of this motor back when we very first bought it and it broke a valve, um, this had a long water pump on it from the factory. And this is a short aluminum water pump. So aside from the weight savings, we're saving an inch and a half of distance up here, which, you know, we're gonna be putting this in a, in a car. So we're definitely would be good to have that extra inch and a half up front to save. And the, the bolt that came with this water pump uh, bolt kit, the bolt kit I bought, uh, didn't have the correct bolt there. So we're just putting a, this janky bolt in there. This pulley and water pump is too fancy for me, but I didn't buy this uh, pulley set up either because it was fancy and chrome. It just happened to be the cheapest one I could get because I wanted a single groove crank pulley and uh, the shortest water pump and pulley setup I could get to give me the most room to swap this in a car. We just thought that our uh, studs were messed up. I talked to Rocky about it and he noticed that actually the threads, if you look at the last couple threads, are a little boogered up. So um, apparently I'm just gonna have to run a die over these studs. So we're gonna turn the motor upside down and run a die over that. Don't mess with the heater get burnt and uh figure out if we can fix these with just a die i believe that's all we're gonna well, have to do i didn't think about the lifters being in there so i can't really turn it all the way over we're about to lose our lifters out anyway i know these heads kind of got traded around a little bit and sit the machine shop so it probably got beat on the table a few times and that's what our problem is if it didn't like before it's probably gonna like now yeah, exactly. rocky don't, don't break the heater no no. Can turn it on? No. Just the ends of them is messed up because it doesn't seem to have any kind of issue on down farther. It's got tapped on the end. Super Clayton sent us some uh, oil absorber and Rocky's trying his best to eat it if he can. He uh, likes to eat stuff like that, I guess. We can use this right now, can't we? Oh, cool. That's like wood shavings or something, isn't it? Here's a good look at the threads. Just a little bit, you know, it doesn't take hardly anything and they won't start. Okay, now we're gonna actually try and get our rocker arms on there, set our lash, turn this motor over and see if our push rods are the correct length or not. So you wanna make sure you're not on the high point of the cam lobe, you're on the actual base circle part. And on a hydraulic like this, spin the push rod until it stops and that's your, then you're at zero lash. And everybody will tell you something different. People say quarter of a turn, three quarters of a turn, half a turn, one turn. I'm just going to do half a turn. And then that's going to be our, that, that one set. And then do the same thing with the next one. Now we're going to turn the motor over and see uh, what it looks like. Let's see, our mark should be in the center of the valve stem if the push rods are the correct length. And we are just, just barely 
on this side with the, what is that, the exhaust valve? Let's see what our intake looks like. And it's just barely on the other side, but both of them are really close to the center. I'll give you a close up. Of Here's it. what I'm talking about. This is the exhaust one. We're center, but we're just barely off center to the outside. And this one is just barely off center to the inside. Head bolts. No head bolts. It's all good. So that should mean that this one's just barely too long on the exhaust side and barely too short on the intake side. But being that it's really close to the center, that's good enough for the girls I hang out with. So we're just gonna run them. It's weird how these cannon valve motors have two different length push rods. I'm used to inline engines mainly that, you know, have all one length push rods. You wanna make sure you have the flat edge of your roller trunnion or whatever that's called in there pointing up. These are 1.7 ratio rock arms, which I believe is factory ratio for a, a 454 like this. For a smaller ratio, if you didn't want quite as much lift on the cam, that's kind of a old school way to make a little bit bigger cam. You go from a 1.7 to a 1.8, or if you got a small block, you go from a 1.5 to a 1.6 or 1.7. Something like that. Give you just a little bit more lift out of your team. I'm gonna go through and put a little dab of this uh, assembly lube on the tips of these push rods too, just to make sure everything's good and lubricated. So once again, get it to zero lash. And then half a turn or three quarter or a quarter or one turn, whatever you like. You lock this poly lock down and then I'll keep it from backing off. And I'll reset these when we get them in the car. Uh, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is do it when it's running. You back it off till you hear it start ticking. When it stops ticking, you're at zero and then give your half a turn. Now that we got all the rockers adjusted, we got our nice rubber valve cover gasket on there and we're gonna set our, our holly Valve covers on here and get this bolted down. Man, I'll, I'm a fan of the fabricated aluminum valve covers. I really do like them. You're, you're really gonna eat my car keys. Oh, he, no, quit. It amazes me what he wants to eat. Literally anything and everything. What do you want to write down? Don't eat it. You know, this is the thing that always I always fell in love with with the big block Chevys was the big wide valve covers. Any big block, you know, a Hemi or a big block Chevy or big block Ford, something with a big wide valve cover, it just always looks so cool to me. So let me show you here why I chose to go from a peanut port head to a rectangle port head because you can see here, this is an oval port intake gasket. So a peanut port is even smaller and lower than that. You can see, because anytime you can get your intake port up taller, same thing with your exhaust, the taller the port is. You ever look at a NASCAR engine or an LS engine? The ports are way up high, any sort of modern engine. So you always want your ports to be taller. Uh, not, you know, sometimes bigger is not always the right answer, but you know, having a tall, efficient runner uh, is really good. Now I've got the correct intake gaskets for it. And also another thing you want to watch out for is you don't want the gasket to droop all the way down and you have a, a lip here. So I'm gonna lift this gasket up as we bolt the intake on when we final assemble the intake. We're gonna dummy the intake up on here just to show you what it looks like because uh, we're not, you know, we don't wanna leave it on the engine to put it in the car. So uh, I'm not gonna fully install it right now. And in my opinion, I just throw these things away right here. I just always use a beta form a gasket at the front and back. Uh, it seems to seal up better than these things do uh, when you put the intake on. All right, big moment again. Here we go. Now this intake, I, I bought it at a swap meet, at the hot rod order swap meet for 45 bucks because apparently one of these holes for the dominator flange is, in, is drilled a little bit at the wrong angle or something. So we're gonna have to drill and tap that at some point, but yeah, I got a deal on this intake. I couldn't believe it. So the plan for this thing when we get it in the car is it's supposed to be run on Terminator X computer. And we're gonna run, you know, obviously fuel injectors, probably gonna have a big intake elbow with like a 102 millimeter LS throttle body. That's the plan. 
but since I don't actually know what this motor's going in yet, uh, if I told you, I would be lying because I really don't know. Uh, we may have to do different things about the height, the intake, so that's why I'm not permanently doing it either. We got our nice billet looking distributor here from Holly. And like I said, it's a dual sink for a fuel injection setup. You want to make sure it drops all the way down flush with the intake. That way you know that you uh, are engaged on the oil pump. If you're final assembling this, you would want to put a gasket under that. But nice looking piece. I like the size of it, I like the looks of it. We're gonna reuse this factory harmonic balancer for now. Uh, eventually, if we get real serious about drag racing this thing at the track, we may switch to a SFI approved one so we can pass tech at a big track or anything. But for right now, we're just gonna reuse this one. These motors are externally balanced, so it has a counterweight on one side of uh, the inside of this harmonic balancer. <laughs> <laughs> Our water pump pulley's in the way. I gotta take it back off. I didn't think about this thing being in the way at all. I don't know why. Second attempt. There we go. We got our uh, harmonic balancer install tool. I got this thing at LS Fest one year. I had a deal because it was missing one attachment, and uh, it's really a good tool. I've, I've enjoyed using it. Gotta make sure your keyway's in the right spot when you do this. This is better than trying to hammer it on and beating the thrust bearing out of your crank or or using the bolt to pull it down. I, I mean, I've done both of those in my past, but we all have a past, you know? Got it all the way till it stopped right there. Now we just gotta get put the crank bolt in, put the, the pulley on the crank, and we'll have all that done. A little Loctite on there so it doesn't back out on us. Back on for the second time. It looks like it lines up perfect, so we're good there. Uh, the reasons why we're not putting on a, a oil pan today or an alternator is because we still don't know exactly what car this is going in. So. Once we figure out exactly what it's gonna go in, we're gonna get the correct oil pan and pickup tube. Um, we're also going to get the, the correct alternator mount and the correct headers or manifolds we're gonna use. Uh, same thing with the intake. Uh, when we figure out exactly what's going in, we will put it on there. That's why you need to stay tuned to our channel because eventually this is going in some car and it's gonna go fast and it's gonna be twin turbo and it's gonna be awesome this thing it was like eight bucks and uh i didn't think we had a block off plate for some reason and then uh when i was going through those bags i realized there was a factory stamp steel one but we already got this it's cleaned up it's new so we're gonna put it on there okay i sat down add everything up which you never want to do as a hot rodder don't try it kids don't do it well i gave 400 dollars for this engine which i only ended up using basically the block and the crank out of it uh then I had $8 in the block off plate. I had $67 in the pulleys. I had $181 in the ARP head studs. They're part number 235-4113. I had $100 in the uh, Mylodon oil pump. And that is part number 18760. Had $139 in the eBay roller rockers. I had $38 in the Melling uh, double roller timing chain, $29 in 1,000th under engine tech main bearings. I had $42 in the stainless steel bolt kit, which I ended up barely using any of those. Um, $220 in the Hyper Eutectic 30cc dome top pistons, and they came with Molly rings. I got $21 in the connecting rod bearings that are 1,000 thunder. I have $344 in the I-beam rods that are 6.135 inches long from eBay. I have $182 in the valve spring kit, which is uh, HRS-98636-K11 from Howard's Cams. I have $166 in the cam kit, which came with the lifters. That's part number S 
UM-K1302. I had $172 in the head gaskets from Kometic, which are C5432-030. I paid $800 for these Speedmaster heads used. Uh, they're 320cc, like I was saying before, rectangle ports. $408 for the uh, distributor for the dual sink so we can run fuel injection on this thing. I got, uh, I got $166 in these Holly valve covers, part number 241-281. $30 in the uh, swap meet water pump. I have $45 in the swap meet eBay style fuel injected intake and $81 in the Trick Flow uh, engine gasket set, which came with the rectangle port intake gasket. It's TFS 4140E913. And so for a total of $3,639 in this engine. Uh, so there's the total guys never add up your parts. Uh, don't ever tell your wife But we also saved over a hundred pounds between the aluminum heads the aluminum intake aluminum water pump all that stuff adds up So, you know this thing I don't know what how this would weigh compared to an all cast iron small block Chevy or small block Ford or something like that But I would think this is probably similar weight now with all the aluminum parts. Well guys, we're to the end of another video You know what that means? Time for some RC Colas and some Bahamas. What are they so scared of? It's not like I'm going to spray this all over them. So I hope this helps some of you guys. And uh, maybe you learned something. Maybe I need to learn something. Put it in the comments below. Try to be nice, you know. Remember, guys, eat your Bahamas. Drink the juice. It's healthy, right? It's healthy, right? This is Pebbles Rockies, baby. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Even TikTok now. Sleeper Dude 88 is our handle on all those. Below, you can buy some of the merchandise or click on my username, go to the store button. You can buy some merchandise. You can also check out our second channel, Sleeper Dude 2. I'll put up some clips of what I do for a living. I also put up some short clips of what we do around here. And we really appreciate you guys watching. And we'll put this motor in something and we're going to go fast. So stay tuned for all that.